Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here, and today I wanted to talk to you about how to do Math Hammer. Uh, because all of next week, maybe, who knows when I release this stuff, I, I don't. I'm intending to talk about the Gene Steelers cults and how to make the best kill team with them, etc. Uh, and to do that, I've done a lot of Math Hammering, which just means theory crafting, whatever you want to call it. And instead of explaining in each video how I came to my conclusions, uh, I thought that it would be a good idea to tell you what I was doing. Now, we don't need to be here. I'm really just testing the lighting and the green screen behind me where I am. I also brought this along in case I wanted to point at it. But I didn't, but I wanted to prove it was here. Let's go to the computer, and I'm going to show you how to theory craft for yourselves. Now that my brain's working, it turns out there was a reason I brought this. It's because I'm going to state the incredibly obvious. If you want to theory craft, the first thing you need are the rules. You're going to need your tactics. That's going to come up in one of the videos. You're going to need your data sheets. And you're going to need your points costs. Okay. Now we can go to the computer and see what we're going to do with the points and the stats. Okay, so the first thing that we have to understand are how dice work, specifically in this case, of course, a d6. Doesn't really matter how a d20 works. So here I have done a very quick little graph for you of how uh, the value of a dice can be worked out. Uh, th this is a bit that's relevant to us. If you need to roll a three plus, let's say you're a marine shooting a bolter, you need to roll a three plus. That means you have a 66.7% chance of rolling that three plus. So with that in mind, how can we put this graph, which seems a touch dry as a bit of source material, I might say, how can we put this into actual practice? It's a very good question. Using this as a basis, I went ahead and ran all of the numbers for all of the GSD Decolts units, and we end up with this. So I'll explain this in a moment. No, no, I'll explain this now. Column B. We have all of the different units that you could take as the Gene Stealer Cult. Not ev literally every single one, but almost every single one. Um, we go all, all the way from a Neophyte with an Orsa Gun, Neophyte Shotgun, all the way down to Hybrid Metamorphs, Aberrants, Acolyte Leaders, Gene Stealers, everything. There are some very interesting things I found out while doing this. Uh, along here, we ha uh, along the top here, we have Gek, Mech, Other. Ignore Other, that's just comments I left for myself, really. And then we've got ranged gek, ranged mech, and we've got ls, which is long and short, range. First, let's discuss what gek means. This is something you have to understand. So for any of these stats to be relevant at all, you have to be shooting at something or attacking something. Uh, because the way 40k works, of course, is you have a strength, and that strength is based, like, the relevance of your strength well, strength is irrelevant if there isn't a toughness for it to go against. So, when we say Gek or Mech, it stands for Guard Equivalent or Marine Equivalent. Guard Equivalent just means a model that is a standard issue guardsman. So, for example, uh, that means they have a toughness of 3 with a 5 up save. There you go. Whereas a Marine Equivalent is a uh, toughness of 4 with a 3-up save. The reason we use those as two baselines is because you have to pick a baseline somewhere and also those two profiles are generally used as, well they're quite common throughout 40k uh, and they are also uh, generally the profiles that are iterated on. They're, they're the baselines is all I'm saying. In the D common, column, column, I can speak good, yes. In the D column we have the guardsman equivalent uh, and so, as all of these uh, different stats that I filled out are being uh, worked out, I'm using the toughness and armor save of a guardsman model to figure out all of these numbers. Whereas in column E, I'm using a marine to figure uh, equivalent model to figure out all of these numbers. And these are relevant, and we get to why in a moment. Uh, and then. Likewise here, obviously these numbers look a little bit more complicated, but there's no issue. So, again, we're using Guardsmen here, and we're using Mechs, uh, Marines, sorry, here. 
on the left, 0 0.111 in this particular column, uh, row, cell, uh, that means the long range damage you'll do, uh, and on the right we have 0 0.333, which means the short range damage you'll do. The reason those are different, of course, just means that as you are um, over a certain range in kill team, you lose a ballistic skill. So naturally, the amount of damage you're going to do is lowered because your ballistic skill is worse. And I've figured out all of the differences for those. Over here, this was mainly uh, for my own interest. Uh, I filled out a few other kind of generic um, standard profiles. So we've got a bolter, a tail gun drone. So just marine with a bolter, a tail gun drone, an orc, regular orc boy in close combat. And I haven't gotten around to filling out the plasmarine and Reva leader close combat but I will obviously uh, the reason these are interesting is because when you're trying to figure out um, point equivalencies and whether or not a model can make its points back it's good to know what you will be going up against and this allows you to do that so for example we know that a neophyte with an auto gun firing against a marine equivalent at long range has a 0.037 chance of getting a wound through, basically. And when you compare that to a bolter at 0.222, that just gives you a baseline to say, actually, oh, well, actually 0.03, sorry. Actually, the autogun is quite bad. It's a third as good as a bolter. And that is just good, good to know, relevant. Uh, kind of gives you a way to mentally position where an auto gun really sits in the game because everybody knows how powerful a bolt gun is but when it comes to the other weapons it can be a little bit up in the air sometimes this is all good stuff this is great there's a lot of numbers here pro tip uh, our absolute most point of efficient model is a metamorph leader with bone swords there you go uh, for killing guard that is and we go into other stuff later Obviously, the rock saw and rock drill are still absolutely amazing. No, rock cutter, not the drill. Oh my god, don't take the drill. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, okay, and that's great. However, one thing to note here is that this is pure damage output. This doesn't take into account special rules. Uh, it doesn't take into account movement. It doesn't take into account, an, you know, um, armor saves for the models that I'm testing. It also doesn't take into account anything that isn't their weapon hitting something else. For example, the Aberrants, now they they have, Aberrant with Power Hammer, an Aberrant with Power Hammer has, far and away, the highest damage we can do as, as a team to either Guard or um, Marine models. Ignore the Voxel. Um, but that's 19 points. Why on earth would I ever take that when I could take a Metamorph Leader with Bone Swords for uh, 10 points, is it? I think it's 10. You know, that's almost... Hot, but Of course, what it's not telling you here in this graph and this uh, spreadsheet is that the aberrants have higher toughness, which is very useful, um, and have two wounds. They also have bestial vigor. Those are important things when it comes to taking into account exactly what you want to take in an army. Okay, now, how can you do this yourself? Because this looks big and scary, doesn't it? I'm going to show you. Okay, mathhammer8thedition.com. Boom. Look at this bad boy. It's amazing. So, uh, I'm just going to give you a very quick rundown of how to use it. I think it's very obvious. But let's say we want to find out how much damage a bolter would do. So, a bolter, at long range, will have one shot because it's a rapid fire one weapon. A marine is holding it, so it hits on a 3+, plus, but it's at long range, so he's at minus 1 to BS, so he's hitting on 4s. The weapon strength of the bolt is 4, there's no AP, and the damage of the weapon is 1. Here at the bottom, we have, as we see, Gek and Mech, and as soon as we click those, we see how much damage a bolter will do to something. Now, for example, here we see uh, the tough, against a Mech, no, let's go against the guard because that has a more interesting number. Uh, we're looking at total damage. Ignore dead models. That's not what we're interested in for kill team. We are interested in total damage only. 0 0.222. Great. However, 
That doesn't sound very good, does it? So let's see what happens once we get into uh, short range. So a bolt is rapid fire one, which means once we're in half range, we get two shots. And also, because we're at half range, we no longer have the um, lowering of our ballistic skill. So that goes back to three, as it should be. Suddenly, we're at 0 0.593. That's not bad at all. Now, obviously, keep in mind, that's not that's the total sum of what we've just done. It's not 0 0.593 per shot. Shots are included, as we see here, total shots two, which leads us to 1.333 hits. Uh, which leads us to, uh, yeah. There you go. And that, L's and G's, is how Math Hammer works. I would highly recommend you all go to see this this site. It is literally just mathhammer 8 edcom uh, and check it out. Uh, do your own math hammering. If you want to know uh, from your own kill team what's actually going to be the best possible combination. Uh, maybe you have Grey Knights and you've been tossing up for ages between what's actually better. Falchions or uh, halberds or swords or or the the doom hammer whatever it's called the power hammer maybe you can't figure it out well in about uh what, what's that going to take you to put in, input that data two minutes tops you can know mathematically which of those weapons is going to be better at killing guard and marine equivalent models and okay that's me done for the day guys uh, I'm leaving this on the screen at the moment so that you can actually have a final quick look at it. If anybody can't wait for my my breakdown of the GC the Colts team, I think uh, what I've said down here is, th is the best thing we can really say. Uh, if you have a model with a rending claw, the rending claw is always the best option uh, among GC the Colts, unless the enemy has an invulnerable save. And also the metamorph leader uh, with bone swords is an absolutely insane model that you really should be in all of your lists like it's up there with um the rock source that's how good a model it is i would even argue actually it's better than a rock source, but you know what we'll get into that when i'm actually doing the rundown anyway guys thanks for watching this has been glass half dead i hope you enjoy some math hammer let me know if you find it useful okay glass half dead logging out goodbye